I am going to, there's Taylor Battle. Taylor's going to be with us in the second half. What's up, coach? How are we hey, TB. How you guys doing? We're doing good, great. Man. How you doing? I'm hanging in there, man. Stay positive, hey, buddy. <laughs> Taylor, I'm going to stop your video for right now, and uh, we'll bring you in in the second half here. Or maybe you can mute your own video for now. Yeah, I can mute my own video for sure. All right, great. Great. And I'm going to... All right. Paul, every now and then I'm going to mute myself because uh, I got four kids running around. So just to <laughs> give you a heads up. I tell That's them fantastic. I'm going on something. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, all, it's almost an invitation to interrupt, right? No question. Yeah. All right. I'm seeing people streaming in here. We're going to let the, um, let the participants arrive and then we will we'll jump into this. Paul, how do you have such a black beard? I'm very jealous or envious would be a better word. Uh, I don't know. It's a good lineage. I, I have a, a good family roots. My, and I only say that because I know my dad's participating. He's one of the participants on the, the virtual chat here. So, um, yeah, no, it's it's my playoff beard is what I'm calling it. You know how the hockey guys grow out oh, there. Oh, I love that. Absolutely <laughs> love the playoff beard. Yeah. Yeah, so. so I want to welcome everybody in. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Want to let everybody have the chance to log on. I see Sam Bernstein all the way out in the Shenango Valley has tuned in. I see John Schaefer from Las Vegas. Welcome in, guys. So it's good to see people from all over the, all over Nittany Nation uh, chiming in to to hear from you here today, Coach, and about the magical season that you all had. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna get started. All right, well, welcome in. Where else would you rather be than a Zoom full of Penn Staters? I'm Paul Clifford, CEO of the Penn State Alumni Association, and I want to welcome you to the Alumni Association's Coffee Hour Special Edition today with head men's basketball coach, Patrick Chambers. You know, on coffee hour, you can expect to hear the voices of Penn Staters. Yes, big round of applause for, for Pat. You can expect to hear Penn Staters and their voices and what they're passionate about. You can also expect to feel the pride and the power of the Penn State network. And so this, this, this afternoon now, I usually do these in the morning. This afternoon, we're gonna invite you to climb with us uh, as we welcome in men's basketball coach, Pat Chagers. Welcome to the show, Pat. How's everybody doing? Thanks for having me, Paul. Appreciate you, buddy. Hey, I appreciate you. Let's start this interview where the season ended, right? Walk us through from where you left to go to Indy, your return when you learned about the NCAA tournament being canceled. Let's, let's get all that, that stuff out of the way right at the beginning. Yeah, so we were headed to Indy. Really good week of practice. Um, the, the vibe was back. The connection was back. I think there was a lot of weight off our shoulders knowing that we were NCAA tournament bound. Uh, Lamar was about to surpass the, as TB knows this, the all-time scoring record. And uh, just, just, and first team all Big Ten and Mike was right. feeling better. So I just felt like the connectivity and the energy and the juice that we had going into the Big Ten uh, tournament was, was back where it was when we won eight in a row. And I was excited about that. So we get to Indy, uh, you know, we, we start to see some things go on. Again, this is our little bubble. This is just, right. I'm bringing you back to that time. Obviously the coronavirus is uh, on a macro level, much bigger um, than we ever could have imagined. But in my little world, in our little world, you know, you get up uh, that, that Thursday morning, we get another buy, which is fantastic. You get up that Thursday morning and you, you do your preparation like you always do, pre uh, uh, breakfast and do some film and do some scout. And then you get on the bus and we head over to the arena and the arena was awesome. It was beautiful. And we had so much energy and 
And we just had a great walkthrough. Guys were making shots. Guys were talking. We were just flying all over that place. So really excited. And then we get back to the hotel, and they're telling us, hey, we're going to have this game. We're just going to do it without fans. And we were fine with that. And as long as we play the game. And uh, I, I was about to go for a walk in Indy, beautiful day. And I, I get a text, hey, are you around from our sport administrator, Lena Holleran? And I knew right then and there, I was like, no. You know, your, your heart sank just a little bit. And you're just like, no. And uh, she tells me, so there's no Big Ten tournament is canceled. So, you know, we're devastated because we didn't want to end the season the way we did, um, you know, the last couple of weeks. We hit some speed bumps there. So get, get, have a quick team meeting and uh, talk to the guys and just say, hey, we're canceling the tournament. Just some tears, um, a lot of poor body language. But you understand they're down, their heads are down, their shoulders are slumped. I'm, I'm, I'm devastated, too, because I was so jacked up to play and coach in this tournament. So we, we're trying to figure out when we're leaving. We leave at 3.30. There's, there's a glimmer of hope, hey, that we're, plan, we're playing in the NCAA tournament. We're not going to have fans. It's going to be okay. It might be delayed a little bit. There's a lot of solutions out there. Just trying to give them hope. And I think at that point, hope is every, anything or everything we can grab onto. And we're on our plane back to um, Penn State, chartered flight back to Penn State. And you, you, you turn the phones on. You're not supposed to, but everybody does. And I wasn't on Twitter at the time, so everybody knows now the NCAA tournament's canceled. And you can just hear the numbness, the silence um, in the plane, on the bus back to the Bryce Jordan Center. And, and it was something, it was surreal. It was something, Paul, I'll never forget in my, in my lifetime. It was one of those moments that uh, you just kind of look around and everybody's heads are down and it's so quiet. And it was eerie. It really was eerie. So we get back to the Bryce Jordan Center. I'm in the locker room. And now I have to deliver more bad news. And there's uh, tears everywhere, hugs. And I, I just try to sum it up for him with every blessing that there will be with every, with every devastation. Because this is devastating to these young kids, right? This is our little bubble. This is devastating. <laughs> and they're, they're just distraught, devastated, trying to figure out why us, why is this happening? What's going on? We're overreacting. All these emotions right, right. that these young kids are going to. And the only thing I could go to is, you know, unfortunately I was stabbed when I was 31. I know most of us know that out there. And I, I just try to tell them, Hey, with every negative, with every hardship, with every difficult situation that you're going to go through in life, you know, there is a blessing. There is a blessing around the corner. Take it from somebody who knows I was done. I, I was over for me. And somehow I, I'm still alive and I'm living my dream and I'm living with great passion and energy and something good is going to come from this. Now, at that time, I don't know how much they really listened, but I tried to give them, again, some hope. So that was the day in the life of Penn State basketball. And then on top of that, Paul, then the news comes out the next day, 24 hours later, which I really, really stung. And we were all a little bit bitter about not having selection show Sunday. But right. again, on the macro level, you, you now sit here 45 days later from that time, from March 12th, maybe 46. Um, you know, there's, there's a much bigger situation here going on. Absolutely. Hey, Coach, take me through just how you wrapped your mind around, because you, you talk about – your players having to deal with this and, and their emotions and the disappointment, but it's gotta be, it was a, certainly a disappointment for you as well. How do you get your mind wrapped around, um, you know, not just kind of like dealing with your own emotions, right. But then being there for your players and continuing to lead while you're going through something at the same time. It, it was hard. Uh, prayer, <laughs> meditation, <Yeah>. breathing, <laughs> Uh, I had to really um, pull it together quickly because I've worked so hard, my staff and I, and all the players yeah. that have come through the door to, to build what we've built. It's taken us quite some time to get to this level of being a top 10 team, top 25 team, being showing some consistency, getting by three years in a row, 76 wins, 61 in the last three years in the Big Ten, all incredible accomplishments. It took a lot of hard work, a lot of tears, a lot of effort, uh, a lot of collaboration. Um, yeah. So 
I, I, I'm giving all that information to you because that's what's going on in my head. I'm like nine right. years and I'm not going to hear our name on selection show Sunday. Like we, we deserve that joy. I mean, to feel a little bitter, I, I'd be lying if I didn't feel bitter and mad and, and totally upset. Um, but the NCAA, uh, to make the right decision. And so now I have to compose myself and I have to be able to, to go in front and, and still tell them it's okay to grieve. Yeah. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's totally fine. I know 20 years ago, as we're watching the last dance, maybe that wasn't cool in the nineties or the late eighties, right. but it's 2020 now. And mental health is a, is a, is a huge issue. Huge. And it's okay to have these emotions as an 18, 18 and 23. And it's okay to show it in front of your teammates and your coaches. That's why we're going to hug it out. That's why we're going to love each other up. That's why we're going to have a tears in front of one another because you need to have this grieving time. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about this. You're, you're one who has taught us, right? It's not about where you end, right? But it's all about embracing the journey or embracing the climb as, as you guys like to talk about it. So, you know, when, when a team has a magical season like this, you, sometimes you look back at the schedule and you see, oh, wow, look, a, a bunch of cupcakes here. And then they win a half a dozen games in their conference and, and they're NCAA tournament eligible, right? But that's not how you guys did it this year. You went on the road and you beat Georgetown in D.C. You beat Syracuse in New York. You went to Michigan State. You beat Iowa in the Palestra. This was not the easy road to position your team to be what was most assuredly, everyone agrees across the board, an NCAA tournament team, if not one of the top four seeds um, going, into, going into the tournament. What stands out most to you about this team and about that climb? You know, it had to be um, the love and selflessness and the connection that they had, uh, basically the relationship that they had in the locker room. And I'm sure Taylor can speak to this too with his teams. Um, but when you have that cohesion and you know guys are looking out for one another and guys are not looking for credit and they're putting their personal agendas aside and it's all about the team, team first. When it's team first, good things are going to happen. And when guys are selfless and playing for one another, then good things are going to happen. Um, and, and if that's the situation, then you're going to be able to go to Michigan State and win and Michigan and win and Purdue and win. I mean, again, TB will tell you about all these places. They're one of the, the, the hardest places to play in Nebraska. I'll throw Nebraska. But Iowa at the Palestra, Alabama at home, Maryland at home, uh, Georgetown on the road. Just, just, we went out and, and, and sought out the hardest schedule we could put together and I think we accomplished that but I thought this was the team that was ready for it because of you know we laid the bricks uh, Lamar's freshman year and I thought with Lamar and Mike and John and Jamari that leadership group that we had and I thought the the younger guys were really talented um, I thought it was important that the nail in the coffin for me though was the retreat in Stone Harbor New Jersey when we went down there and we spent 48 hours there there was something different. These guys, you know, guys, two guys go off, three guys, there's clicks. Guys go here, guys. That's right. not what I saw. I saw guys, when we did the, you know, Wave Runners, we did it together. When we did um, the beach, they did it together. Um, when we did uh, the commander, Mark McGinnis, which is a Navy SEAL with right. 250 missions without a fatality, pretty amazing. When he spoke, it was an amazing leadership lesson for all of us. And then we, we leave, the coaches leave, and Commander and I debrief. They stayed in there another hour and a half on their own, arms locked. This is what I was given a few days after the situation. And I knew right then and there, I'm like, this is going to be a special year. Yeah, and, and look, it, it's apropos that you have those pillars of excellence behind you because as we hear you talking about going through the season and how you've dealt with, with some of the adversity and how you prepared for this season, you could see that it's built on those pillars. Take us through those, those pillars of your program that are there, Coach, and, and maybe talk a little bit about um, how so – just some examples from the season about how those pillars came to life. Well, you got to have faith, uh, especially now. If, you, if we all haven't gotten back to our roots a little bit about having faith in the big guy up above, we need to. So number one, it's about faith there. And that's got to be your foundation. 
Uh, number two, faith, faith in one another, faith in me, faith in the staff. And I'll give you a perfect example of that is Lamar Stevens coming back. Yeah. Testing the waters easily could have been a late second round pick or at least a two way uh, player and decides to come back. You don't come back if you don't have faith in the head coach and the staff and the players that you have in that locker room. I mean, th that's the ultimate right there. So that's the best analogy I can give you there. Accountability. I felt like our guys this year held each other to a higher standard. Uh, somebody didn't touch the line, they're calling each other out. If somebody wasn't practicing hard, they're calling each other out. It was less me yelling and screaming uh, to motivate, that real motivation, right? Yeah. It was more about them holding each other to, hey, we want to be great. We want to play for a Big Ten championship. That was our goal, by the way. I right. mean, I never say it in the media, but now it's all said and done. We, we wanted to win a Big Ten championship. We put ourselves there. We, we, again, we had yep. some speed bumps at the end, but we were right there for most of this season. And a lot of the professional people, uh, pundits on ESPN, or Jay Billis, I'll name one, uh, said we had the ingredients of a Final Four team. And we sure did. During that eight-game winning streak, we were, we were definitely rolling. And I think because of the accountability that guys held in that locker room um, was, was powerful. And then I'll, I'll step aside here. And <laughs> the, the, the third pillar is passion. Look, our guys worked hard. You know, when I first came to Penn State, um, our guys weren't in the gym as much. I'll just say that. And you, 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 I might have to choreograph certain things or ha have, come on guys, encourage them to get in the gym. There's not one time in the last two to three years that I asked these guys, you need to be in the gym. You don't get extra shots. You don't get extra lifts. You're not doing extra conditioning. You need, you know, just, they just, they're living in the gym. They live in there. Matter of fact, it came to a point where I had to tell Lamar, yo, you know, um, we got catapult, we got all the power, the force plate, you know, it's telling us that you're getting a little fatigued. You got to back off a little bit. Right. I mean, I, that's a good problem to have. And that was a lot of our team. So passion, you got, you got to love to do this and you got to love to be a part of it. And, and passion spoke volumes. Humility. Look, we were top 10 in the country and, um, you, you know, and we're top 25 when we're getting more, notoriety than we've ever received I mean it was a lot like the NIT uh, championship run man the press was all over us social media was crazy and uh, just remain humble and hungry don't get caught up in uh, the poison that's out there or the perfume smell it don't taste it um, real important walk on campus uh, be humble and hungry in everything you do um, don't act differently you know act like we've been here before it but treat people with respect treat people how you wanted to be treated we always say the golden rule, right? If I'm standing at Fascia Luna and there's people ahead of me, don't, you don't have to give me a table before anybody. I'm going to stand in line just like everybody else. So basically that's, that's the, the analogy that, that I use. So I'll give the Fascia Luna a little shout out here. So there that's humility. Go. And then gratitude, um, man, appreciate what we have. They go to Penn State. They fought for a Big Ten championship. They're getting a Penn State degree. Are you kidding me? A Penn State degree? And the, the, the holistic approach to Penn State and what Penn Staters do and what you do from, from the academics to the Big Ten basketball to life after basketball. And, oh, by the way, it's top ten socially. Think about that circle that I just completed. I mean, you're getting the total, you're getting the total package, right? Uh, right? So, obviously, really important how we approach that. So, be grateful for being at Penn State. Be appreciative. Say thanks to your assistant coaches. Say thanks to your professors. Say thanks to Paul Clifford. Say thanks to Sandy Barber. You know, I, I think that's a powerful statement in gratitude. Uh, I'll just give you one analogy right now. Uh, obviously, we do a ton of charity, CBC. But what Lamar did this year uh, with the day of awesome, I think Rose is on here, the day of awesomeness uh, yeah. that PJ and Rose and Lamar Stevens did. I think that just showed his gratitude uh, for sure. Uh, which is powerful. And what I'm doing right now is, um, you know, I take my kids for a gratitude walk in the morning. I took my youngest, two youngest today. We go for a gratitude walk to say what we're thankful of, what we're appreciating. And then lastly, I don't want to take up too much time, but lastly, it's attitude because we're in control of that ball, right? We, yeah. we get up and we decide who's in control of our attitude. Are we going to let the coronavirus uh, be in control of our attitude because we're not out going to the gym and going to restaurants and not living a normal life? Are we going to figure out how to, 
how to live uh, in, in this environment, in this situation. That's what, I, I, to me, this has been a gift. And that's the way I've treated this. This has been a gift of time. I would never have this time otherwise. I'd be recruiting. Blue White, I would have been recruiting. I would have been all over the place, my head spinning. Yeah. Um, individual workouts, making sure guys are doing their academics. We're still doing a lot of this. But now I have more time to spend with my wife, to spend with my children. That has been an incredible gift. So my approach every day is I wake up, I have a routine. I wake up, I keep a positive attitude. I, I'm a little anxious. Don't get me wrong. I want to get back in the gym. I want to get back <laughs> to my players. I want to get in the office. Yeah. I, I, I'm not perfect. But it ultimately, I don't let it spiral. And I say, stick to your routine of greatness. Stick to having a positive attitude because it's your, it's your choice. Absolutely. Hey, we have about five minutes left with you, Coach. And I want to get to some of the questions that we're getting in. You know, you alluded to what you would be doing now. Um, talk about what does recruiting like now? What does recruiting look like uh, in uh, the era of coronavirus? I know you're, you're leaving to go talk to a recruit now. What, is that, what does that process look like? Very similar to what we're doing here. We're, we're doing a yeah. Zoom call, and uh, we're going to show Penn State on a virtual level which is just incredible, the technology and what you can do today. You, can't, you couldn't have done this 20 years ago. Uh, so we're going to show campus. We have a great video for that. Uh, we're going to show our style of play. We've got great video for that. We have great content right now because of the successes of so many people, from Taylor Battle all the way to Lamar right. Stevens. Uh, so there's so much to talk about. The degree of Penn State, easy to talk about. The campus of Penn State, easy to talk about. Uh, developing players, easy to talk about because of what we're doing. Think about how many Penn Staters now are in the NBA. You got Calvin Booth as a Calvin GM of yeah. De Denver Nuggets, which is amazing. You got Timmy Frazier in the NBA. You got Tony Carr in the G League. You got Josh Reeves as a two-way player. You got Lamar. Um, I believe he will get drafted. Uh, just there's Penn State is in the NBA right now. So there's so, there's so shining, uh, so many positives. And then we had this great video of one shining moment that we show. If you haven't seen that, it's been out on social. I'm sure if I get PGA Rose, they can resend that out. What an amazing video of the year that we had. And uh, so there's so many positives. So that's what we do. And we kind of showcase the, 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 myself and the staff and the players and, and everything that Penn State provides. So that's what I'll be doing here in about four or five minutes. Yeah, you know, what I love about Beaver Stadium is how we honor those great seasons that we have with the years up on the, up on the, the face of the suites. What are we going to do to honor the 2019-2020 uh, basketball team this year? I haven't, I haven't received total approval yet, but I'm still going to throw this out there. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I want to do a banner, a standalone banner for this group. I think they deserve it. It's one of the greatest teams in the history of Penn State. They, they deserve it. Top 10 team. We haven't been top 10 since uh, the, right. I want to say the uh, 2001, maybe, or early uh, mid 90s. Right. Um, so I think this, this team deserves its, its own banner, and that's for sure. Uh, I designed a ring with Nick Colella uh, and PJ Mullen. So we'll, uh, we'll go some creative things there. And, and then collectively, we, we need to do a celebration. We need to do a celebration. We need to throw some sort of celebration. You know, everybody wants to do a Zoom banquet or a Zoom celebration. I, I just think this team deserves more than that. And then I'm hopeful that uh, the Ohio State, the whiteout game, um, you know, comes to fruition and we have football. And I, I believe we will because I'm very optimistic that they, uh, they get honored maybe at a timeout, that this team gets some individual recognition on the field in front of 107,000 fans. That's, that's what your hope is anyway. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Well, look, if, if Wisconsin can declare themselves national champions, you, you guys could certainly do everything you've just, <laughs> just asked for and more. And, uh, um, and I think that would be more than appropriate. Well, hey, Coach, we know you got to run. Uh, you got a big recruit on the line, and uh, hopefully you'll land him and we'll be able to cheer him on in the, the Bryce Jordan Center as we continue the success of this year and build and build and build. Yeah, let's keep climbing. Everybody keep climbing, keep climbing together. Stay, stay safe, stay healthy, follow the protocols. And remember, this time, this time right now is a gift. Utilize it as a gift and, and do some special things and keep a great attitude. Thanks, everybody. Taylor, good luck. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks, Paul. Take care, buddy. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you. All right, we're going to bring Taylor Battle in. Taylor, if you can go ahead and make your video uh, available to everybody. Welcome in Taylor Battle. 
uh, the all-time leading scorer in Penn State history. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, all Big Ten performer and uh, professional basketball player trotted around Europe for about the past decade and uh, uh, a couple different stops. We're going to ask Taylor all about that. But Taylor, welcome in and tell folks what you're up to nowadays. Well, I appreciate you for having me. Yeah. Uh, great listening, Coach. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, how everything ended, uh, you know, especially for the kids and, you know, for them, for all that they did. They had a great year. Uh, like you said, I played for seven years in Europe. Now that I'm done, uh, I'm back home in old New York. I'm working. I'm a financial advisor. You know, that's that's my post-basketball career. So I'm enjoying it. It's something completely different than putting a, you know, a little orange basketball on the hoop. <laughs> uh, but, you know, at the same time, it's fun. It's competitive. Uh, I'm helping people, which, you know, I take great pride in. So uh, it's a great career path for me, and I'm enjoying it. That's great. Take people through your recruiting process. How did you become a Penn State Nittany Lion? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I would like – I always – I get into this conversation a lot, and I tell people I was pretty much a Penn Stater, you know, from day one, you know, Coach Kanaski, Kirk Kanaski was the one who really recruited me uh, when I was in high school. And I, and I went through, I dealt with a couple injuries. Uh, you know, I didn't play my sophomore summer of AAU. I missed the whole year. I, I had surgery on my ankle. And then my junior year of high school, I broke my other ankle or my other foot. So I was out a couple months. But Penn State just kind of kept coming around. Kirk Kanaski kept making the drive up. Uh, and when I was healthy, you know, I started playing well. But that January of my junior year, I committed to Penn State. Uh, I had a big summer, you know, but I never opened up my recruitment. I was always going to stay to Penn State. They were loyal to me. I'm a loyal guy. Uh, and it was the greatest decision I ever made. You know, I had a, I had a blast at Penn State, you know, the connections, the relationships. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't traded for the world. It was the best place in the world. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned seven years as a pro playing in Europe. You're Italy, Belgium, Slovenia, Israel, Hungary. Well, talk about playing uh, basketball, international pro basketball, and maybe what the difference is. And maybe share, I know last time we got together, you were sharing some funny stories, uh, probably not funny at the time, but um, maybe some uh, funny stories from your time playing basketball internationally. I mean, it was, you know, obviously it's a blessing. Uh, you know, a little kid from the, you know, inner city of Albany, New York to, you know, a little basketball allowed me to travel the world, experience cultures and places that, you know, I never would have gone, you know, let's call it, let's be honest. Uh, you know, so, you know, that it's a gift. You know, I was able to travel the world, my wife, my kid, uh, you know, we were able to see some places, experience some different cultures, whether that be food, you know, most importantly, you know, relationships. I met some, I met some friends who are, you know, are my best friends to this day, you know, that, you know, we were close because we were probably two of the only people in that area that spoke English. So, you know, we, we spent a lot of time, you know, being around each other, uh, you know, you know, traveling the world, you know, experiencing all these different things. So it was, it was truly a blessing and a gift for me to be able to have done that. Uh, you know, and there were some good moments, some bad moments, you know, I joke because, you know, my four years at Penn state, I never missed a game. And, you know, I missed a, I missed a couple, I missed a season, you know, with injury. So, you know, there's some goods, there's some ups and downs, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it was like, it was truly a blessing for me, for me to be able to travel the world, play the game I enjoy playing, uh, you know, and like I said, to be able to do that with my family made it that much better. Yeah. Now, Taylor, take us back, uh, 2011, right? You guys are sitting at 16 and 14 before you go to the Big Ten tournament and, and then ultimately the NCAA tournament, but talk about that run. Um, which was Penn State's last visit to the NCAA tournament. Well, that run was, and you know, you're probably going to think I'm joking or just say that, you know, anyone could have said that. But I remember the day we showed up to Indianapolis, Nick Colella, who was on the staff, was my roommate. And he can tell you, I, I remember calling my good friend Evan Turner. He had left Ohio State and he was right. already in the NBA. And I called him and, I, you know, and I said, you know, listen, I don't know if we're going to win the Big Ten championship, but I, I'm telling you, we will be in the championship game on Sunday. And he laughed and he joked. And then, you know, a couple of days, fast forward a couple of days, uh, you know, I think we, we beat Indiana on, on Thursday. Friday, we come back, we beat Wisconsin in a 36 to 33, you know, beautiful <laughs> basketball game. Right. And then on Saturday, we beat Michigan State. We beat them pretty handily. I think we won by 13 or 14 points. Uh, Tim Frazier played huge in that game. And then on Sunday, you know, we're in the championship. I remember Evan calling me and he's like, 
are you serious? And I was like, listen, I told you. And at that point, we were obviously playing against the Buckeyes, his, you know, his school. And they were the number one overall seed. And they were kind of – we just – you know, they were a little too much for us, to be honest with you. And we just – we played so great that weekend. And if we play anyone else, I think we're Big Ten champions. So, you know, it, you know, I don't really, you know, beat myself up or the guys don't beat ourselves up too much because we lost to a very, very good Ohio State team. Yeah, and, and then uh, NCAA first round, uh, close game against Temple. Yeah, that was – I hate Temple still because of that. But <laughs> that was great. They sent us all the way to Arizona uh, to play our, you know, up, you know down the street rivals. And uh, it was a good game. We had scrimmage them at the beginning of the year. and They were good. They were big. They were strong. You know, we played great. We played great. And, and I truly believe if Jeff Brooks doesn't, you know, blow his shoulder out, we win the game. We were winning, you know, while he was in. Uh, and it went, you know, went down to the, the last shot. I think, you know, Tim found me. I hit a three, you know, with 11 or 14 seconds. I can't remember exactly the tide. And then, you know, Juan, Fer Juan Fernandez makes this, you know, floating shot to beat us at the buzzer. So it was unfortunate. But, you know, with the circumstances with Jeff being out, it would have been hard for us to go and defeat Kawhi Leonard and San Diego State. So it probably – uh, you know, it, it probably went the way it should have because I think they played a double overtime thriller the next game. So it, it worked out for the, for the people viewing the games. Absolutely. So, Taylor, what I noticed this year about you was how present you were uh, throughout the season, even starting back in the fall, early in, early in the season. Um, it seems like you became Lamar's biggest fan as he was chasing down your record. Talk about Lamar Stevens and, and his season and your relationship and just his career at Penn State? Well, after the, the craziest thing is <clears throat> um, when they canceled, I think it was the Ivy League first. They canceled the Ivy League. And I remember sitting, I was sitting in my living room and my sister-in-law was over and I was like, I just feel bad for these kids, like these seniors. I'm like, think of all the seniors out there who were probably close to breaking a record, you know, or now they don't have a chance to, you know, play in the NCAA tournament because, you know, now they were just going to give the champion to the regular season champion. And I, I wasn't – it wasn't even, you know, really going through my head. And then, you know, I watched my brother play the first day of the Big Ten tournament. So I'm like, it's still going on. And then, you know, that morning, Thursday morning, Penn State is about to play. And they break the news that, the, the, you know, the Big Ten tournament is canceled. And I'm still really not even processing anything. Then a couple of days later, the NCAA tournament is canceled. And then it really hit me that, you know, <clears throat> on a personal note, you know, Lamar is six or seven points, whatever he was, away from breaking my record. And now he'll never have that opportunity to do so. Uh, I sent him over a text, you know, just kind of, you know, telling him I uh, apologize that it ended the way it did, uh, you know. And my thing with Lamar is, and what I say, when I go through his career and mine, it's so similar in the, from the standpoint with, you know, our sophomore years, we each went to NIT. Junior years, we both struggle. And then senior year, you know, we, uh, we obviously made it to NCAA tournament and he would have been making it to the NCAA tournament. And, of course, breaking my record, you know, is it something that will live on forever. You know, he'd always be able to see that. You know, but when you work so hard to build something up, you know, I, under, I know more than any individual accolade making that NCAA tournament is, is by far my greatest my accomplishment, you know, from an athlete at Penn State. So for him not to be able to get there, you know, is really is really what, you know, I felt for him because I know that feeling that I had when I heard Penn State call, you know, to be playing in Phoenix. You know, that was the greatest feeling, you know, I could ever feel. So it was so unfortunate. He's a great kid. He's a great player. Uh, and I really hope, you know, he has a long, successful professional career. Yeah. So talk about, um, you know, you, we talked about you played – professional basketball internationally. You brought up Tim Frazier. You brought up some of the guys that you played with. What are some of the things about the connections to Penn State that maybe our graduating players might not realize that you know now, whether it's um, seeing Penn Staters all over the world or the connections that you keep and the friendships that, that continue afterwards? I mean, Penn State is, you go to Penn State, you're, you know, it's, a, it's everywhere. You know, I, I ride down the street. If I see a Penn State sticker in Albany, New York, I'm beeping my horn and vice versa. You know, no matter where we are, if we see another Penn Stater, it's like we're the only two Penn Staters in the world and it's the greatest moment. Uh, right. You know, so it's so – we have so much, you know, pride. Uh, and, and to you know, to what you said, I tell a little story, but my first year in Europe, I was in Germany. And, uh, 
and I check into the game and I remember hearing like a, a little bit normal, you know, louder, you know, applause than normal. But I really wasn't paying attention. I'm in Germany. What the heck could it be? Uh, and then I remember after the game ended, I came out one of the wise, one of the players wise on my team was like, you know, there was like 20 Penn State students here who are studying abroad who were here cheering for you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I was like, I now it makes sense because I heard the you know the loud applause. You know, so I you know Facebook technology allowed me to find one of the per one of the people that were there. And then obviously I invited them. You know, I think 14 or 15 people came. I got them tickets. You know, and it was just I felt home. You know, as you know, as a 22 year old being away for the first time in my life in another country, you know, I felt like I had family and some support around, you know, when they came to the game and, you know, I hung out with them a couple times and, you know, that's what Penn State is, you know, wherever we are in the world, we're still one big family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, not only did you get to play internationally and you got to wear, uh, wear the uniform of the Nittany Lions, but you also represented uh, Team USA basketball uh, for a summer and playing in the, the World University Games. Talk about that experience over in Slovenia and uh, the experience that you had and, and the players that you played with there. I mean, that was, I mean, honestly, that was an unbelievable experience. I remember going out to the trials at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs and, you know, not really knowing what to expect. You know, it was, hey, if you make it. The one thing I didn't want to do is I didn't want to get cut. But at the end of the day, it wouldn't have been that bad because I was getting cut by, you know, 10 of those guys, I think, got drafted and played in the NBA. So really, how bad is it? But, you know, there's, there's that pride. You know, you don't want to be that guy whose name isn't called. You know, so I just went out there. I really wanted to represent Penn State, and I thought that if I can make this team, it'll go a long way for, you know, helping Penn State, you know, people knowing about us. And I played good. I played well enough that, obviously, you know, I made the team. And, you know, some of the guys, you know, Evan Turner was at my wedding, one of my best friends. Uh, you know, James Anderson was a first-round pick. Robbie Hummel, who played at Purdue, and I hated him at Purdue, but such a great guy. <laughs> Uh, you know, Corey Fisher was at Villanova. I think Coach Chambers, coach, who's who's a good friend to this day. Uh, There's so many. Trevor Booker, he just retired. He was a good friend. All these guys, Lazar Hayward, who actually played AAU with me, he was drafted in the first round. So all of these guys that I got to play with, uh, you know, it, it was it was just a different feeling because I've been playing with my guys for you know two years at that point. You know, to switch it up and play against some of the best players in the country and best players in the world. I can't imagine how many guys, yeah. you know, made it to NBA from that thing. Uh, but if, even even to that point, when we were in Colorado Springs, the 19 and under team, you know, Clay Thompson, you know, Seth Curry, you know, John Sherna, you know, all these guys. So we were competing against each other. So we made, we made I formed some relationships that, you know, like I said, this round, this little round basketball really opened up a lot of doors and opportunities for me. You know, whether that's friendships, which is the most important in my eyes, but, you know, to travel the world, to, you know, meet new people, you know, the game is truly, truly impactful and special to me in a lot of ways for that. Absolutely. Well, look, basketball runs deep in your family. Uh, we saw your brother a couple times this year. Talk about his career at Northwestern. Well, it's, it's really cool. Obviously, they did the special on us when he went back and played at Penn yeah. State, and they kind of followed us around on the, big, on the journey who did – an unbelievable job. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you guys taking a look at that. It was great. Uh, you know, they had videos of him running on the court when he was seven or eight years old and I was playing, you know, so for him to come back and play was just, it was truly, it was like a proud big brother moment. Like it almost brought tears to my eyes seeing, you know, him, you know, now being, you know, a freshman in college and playing on the court that he grew up following and rooting for, uh, it meant a lot. And then obviously the last game of the season, you know, they beat Penn State. Uh, and he's, you know, for him, that was, that was a championship. They obviously struggled all year long, but they beat Penn State. And I remember after the game, he FaceTimes me, and it's just, you know, his whole team jumping up and down in the locker room, kind of rubbing it into my face that they beat us. So I was happy for him. Uh, obviously, I didn't want Penn State to lose, but I know how big and how important that was for him to win. So, uh, you know, it was truly special, like I said, and, I, and I'm very, you know – I'm looking forward to following his maturation and, you know, following the rest of his career in the Big Ten. That's awesome. Yeah, check that out. Big Ten Network, The Journey, uh, great. They do a great job with that. Uh, but I thought the, the one about you and your brother was, was particularly well done. Um, so, Taylor, what we like to do on Coffee Talk, on Coffee Hour here, is we like to do a little bit of a lightning round. And so I'm just going to ask you some 
some really quick questions and you give the first thing that pops in your mind. It's kind of like an either or kind of thing or, or like your favorite, okay? So Absolutely. this is a big, big debate at Penn State. Sheets or Wawa? Sheets. Sheets, okay. Your favorite spot on campus? On campus? Yeah. Hub. TikTok or Snapchat? TikTok. Uh, your favorite place, your favorite pizza place in State College? Brothers. Brothers. Uh, how about Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Uh, your favorite Penn State sport? Basketball. Basketball. Uh, Rec Hall or the BJC? Rec Hall. Okay. And your favorite creamery ice cream? Uh, plain vanilla. Plain vanilla. You know, that's actually the most popular flavor. They sell more there plain vanilla than any other ice cream at the creamery. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. Well, hey, Taylor, thanks for joining us. Uh, we have uh, some people on the line, and uh, maybe we'll take some questions from them. Uh, Dave Lucas uh, says, Taylor, I still remember the buzzer beater in the NIT run against George Mason to put the game in overtime. Favorite game I've ever been at. Talk about that. Uh, talk about that game, Taylor. Well, I think the I you know that obviously is one of the you know best shots of my career. But I think the play before I, I we were down one and I turned the ball over, which was kind of happened a lot with me and my you know last second shots. But I remember turning it over and I remember being aggravated, and uh, their guard stepped to the line and his first free throw literally like bounced to the top of the backboard and rose in, of course, and then he made the second, uh, you know, but. I think Jamel took the ball out or I'm not even sure who took it out. He threw it to me. I just raced down the court as fast as I can. And I shot it and when I, sh I jumped and then I turned in the air, but when I released it and I, I, I remember saying like, that's good. Like it, you know, it was only going to miss long or short cause it was dead online. Uh, and when it fell through, it was just, it was a big shot because you know, that what we go from, you know, heartbreak of, we thought we should have been in the NCAA tournament. We don't right now we're in the NIT but, you know, are we really there? Uh, you know, so we didn't play great. Obviously, they had us beat. You know, we hit a shot, and then over time we win the game, and then, you know, we go on to win the NIT. So that shot was such a pivotal moment in that turnaround and, our, you know, us being really engaged and, and wanting to take it home and to, you know, to show people that, you know, we should have been in NCAA tournament. So that was such a great, uh, a great shot and one of a big memory for me. You know, I still check YouTube every now and then to see those shots and bring back those good feelings of, you know, my time spent at Penn State. That's awesome. Well, that team also got to play in Madison Square Garden. I, I guess if you grow up in California, maybe Madison Square Garden isn't like the basketball mecca, but you grew up and, and played high school ball in Albany. Um, I, when I worked at, uh, I worked at the University of Connecticut for a couple of years. The, the goal was always to get to Madison Square Garden, whether it was the Big East tournament or there's just something special about that environment. Talk about what it was like to play in that kind of environment for you as a, as a kid from New York. Oh, it was unbelievable. I mean, I had always dreamt of playing there, you know, watching Michael Jordan score, you know, 50 points, watching Kobe Bryant score, you know, or seeing Spike Lee sitting at the Garden. Right. You know, it's just, it's just a place where, you know, you always want the opportunity to be, to play there. And, you know, when we made it to the Final Four and we were going to play at the Garden, I already knew I was I was going to have a bunch of people come down from Albany. It's a two and a half hour drive, tops. Uh, so from that standpoint, it was great. And then the, just the standpoint, just to take that court where all these greats have walked. Uh, you know, it just you know it had the juices flowing. And I remember starting a game against Notre Dame, and I never came out my sophomore year. I never came out the game, but two and a half, three minutes into the game, I look over at Coach D and I said, I need a sub. And he's like, you need a sub. I'm like, I was so jacked up and so excited to be out there that literally after three minutes, I was on the bench just because I was, I couldn't catch my breath. I remember the court was pulsating. That thing was rocking. We had, I think, 37 buses of Penn State uh, students come down. You know, so that NIT run and championship was truly something special. I mean, you know, the support that we had. You know, I remember Coach Paterno was at the game. You know, this it was unbelievable, you know, the, the turnout we had. It was only fitting that we finished it with winning the championship. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Taylor, hey, you, everything you've done since you've left Penn State uh, continues to swell the fame of, of our institution. We're truly grateful for um, all that you do for Penn State. We love, not, not that we love that your playing career is over, but we love seeing you more and more um, in Happy yeah. Valley. And so I uh, look forward to seeing you more as we, we come back together as a family when we get on the other side of this coronavirus uh, pandemic and uh, come back and celebrate together. Absolutely. All right. Every, be, be well. Every, stay safe and, you know, this, this will pass and, you know, everything get back. And like you said, hopefully this fall we're back watching Penn State football games. Absolutely. And I want to thank everybody for tuning into this special edition of Coffee Hour. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, spending some time with Coach Chambers and with Taylor Battle. Uh, join us next Wednesday when our guest will be uh, Fatima o Odebesi, and Fatima is the president of the Penn State Student Black Caucus. Thank you for all you do for the university, for the glory, and for the future. We are! <laughs>